Cheers! Hello everyone, this is Bart Koppens talking to you from a natural reserve in southeastern Brazil known as Regua, Reserva Ecológica de Guapiatsu. And this reserve is so kind as to let me work here for free and use all their facilities to research moths. And tonight I'm gonna get, catch some good ass moths, that's right. So how am I gonna do it? Well, a lot of you guys know about moth trapping. You've probably seen some of my famous moth trapping videos. Some of them have over 10,000 views already on YouTube and I'm working on more of them. But did you know you don't always need moth trapping equipment to attract moths? Tonight I'm attracting moths with rotten banana. These bananas are fine. They are really tasty Brazilian bananas, lots of sugar. Let me squash them a little just to Make sure they start rotting because they are damaged. I'm not going to eat these bananas. These are for the animals, don't worry. And I'm going to place them here. And believe it or not, there are, especially here in the rainforest, dozens and dozens of big species of moths that love to feed on rotten fruit. Now say it with me. An insect that eats fruit is called a frugivore. Frugivorous. Some people also call it a fructivore. And there's a lot of moths here that are attracted to this fruit. Now the most important thing to know is not all moths can eat. As you've seen on my channel, some moths don't have a functional mouth and they don't eat. The emperor moths or the Saturnidae for example, they run out of energy in about a week because they just live off a fat reserve. Now of course these moths are not going to be attracted to bait because they don't eat. But what can you expect to see here? Well, the relatives of underwing moths and also witch moths. They love rotting fruit. So you have the black witch here, for example, and other witch moth species in the area that are going to come to this fruit. But we also have fruit piercing moths here in Brazil, such as from the genus Eudocima. Uh, we also have Gonodonta and others. So let's start the video. How? and see if we get moths tonight. All right, folks. So behind me in the darkness, I placed some rotting banana fruits, as you can see. So we're going to see what kind of moths are attracted to the fruit and you'll see how important fruit is for moths in the rainforest. Mmm, yes, moths. Mmm, yes, moths. Okay, wow, we have several large moths already. Okay, see them? Let's start with the smallest one first. This is one of the many fruit feeding moths in the rainforest. I have identified it as Zale viridans. It seems that this one is widespread and found all the way from Mexico to southeast Brazil. And it's voraciously drinking banana juice. The interesting thing about these fruit feeding moths is that a lot of them have zero interest in flowers. They just exclusively feed on the juices of fermenting and rotting fruits. A fruit feeding species is also called a frugivore. If you want to attract moths, it's a good idea to place rotting fruit in your garden. Check back later with a flashlight. Here is a fun fact. Most fruit feeding moths are not attracted to sugar. Instead they are attracted to trace amounts of alcohol. Alcohol is a very volatile chemical associated with fermentation. When fruits begin to decompose they produce a pungent and strong odor. Being a fruit feeder is a smart strategy for a moth also. And it may be more nutritious than feeding on the nectar of flowers. Fruits are also mainly carbohydrates and water. And they can also be sources of fat sometimes, proteins and micronutrients, including vitamins, minerals and salts. When fruits break down, it produces volatile odors such as ethylphenol, volatile signals that moths find attractive. But also the presence of ethanol, 
Usually it is yeast that converts sugar into alcohol when fruit decomposes. Of course it is not just alcohol, but it's a specific blend of volatiles including but not limited to alcohol they find attractive. The species you are seeing here by the way is Latis specularis, one of the moths we found tonight on a rotting banana. As you can see guys, the witch moths here in Brazil are various sizes and shapes. This is one of the larger ones, but my anomie is the largest. Let's see if we can actually pick it up. If we are gentle, sometimes they allow us. Oh my god, the moth is allowing me. Oh, it's, it's gone. Well, it was on my hand for a second. That's the cute species in this boys. Let's compare it to my fingertip. So these moths, yeah, they are usually pretty shy. They fly away instantly, but very fascinating. This is a smaller, but actually beautifully marked uh, species of fruit feeding moth. This one is actually found from the United States all the way to Southeast Brazil. It seems to be Cunipeta medina. The cool thing about these species of fruit feeding moths is that they rarely come to light. So with rotting fruit you tend to see completely different species than you could usually find with a light trap. In the rainforest, sometimes older animals like to steal the bananas. This right here is the common opossum. If you're lucky, you'll find them at Regua, especially if food is involved. This one right here is scarfing down some of the bananas we spend our hard-earned money on. Naughty, naughty. But I am not angry. Life is hard if you're an opossum. He can have his nutritious lunch, as long as I'm allowed to film it for YouTube. A nice transaction, in my opinion. Here is another species of Zale. I am not sure what species because of the awkward angle. This is a decent genus of moths with about 40 described species to science. If I had to make an educated guess, I would say it could be Zale fictilis maybe, based on the markings and appearance. Here is one of the many Himeo blemma species, although I am not sure what species this one is exactly. There are small species of witch moth with rounded wings. There are many species of them. I hope to identify this one later. Leave a comment if you recognize the species though. The favorite of my fans and viewers is the black witch. It's one of the bigger ones you can get on fruit here. Oh. And it's very easy to scare them away, as you can see. Well, this is the first batch of bananas. I wonder how the rest is doing. It's raining a bit, sadly. Here we have a black witch. As you can see by the white band on her wings, only the females have this band. She's actually a small female. Normally the females are much larger. Oh wow, now we are talking. The big moths are arriving now. These are black witch moths. Well, I guess that we have spe seen this species a lot of times in my video at this point, but I never get tired of seeing these giants. It appears to be one of the most common species of large moth in the rainforest here. They consistently show up on the rotting fruit. It is easy to distinguish males and females because the females have one creamy white stripe that runs over their wings, while the males are just plain grey. They also have a purple to violet sheen that runs over their wings. It is a kind of iridescence. The fascinating thing about this enormous species is that it has a huge distribution. It is a resident in the southern United States and the Caribbean. But it can be found all the way to Southeast Brazil, Argentina, Paraguay and Uruguay. But they more or less cover Central America, the Amazon and the Atlantic forest too. Interestingly, the caterpillars of these moths have been found in the wild before, eating several kind of trees from the legume or Fabaceae family. But no one has documented all the instars, the development time and the full life cycle yet. Currently, you could more or less say that their life cycle is somewhat unknown to science, even if the caterpillars and food plants have been photographed before. This does not mean we know the complete life cycle. 
And in fact, part of my scientific research project in Brazil is to study the life cycle of this species. It will be hard because almost no one has managed to successfully breed them before. So we need a super experienced and talented moth breeder to pull it off because no one has really done it successfully. In fact, breeding it in captivity and documenting the life cycle would be a huge contribution to science. Because the species is super widespread and common, so they must have a major impact on the environment. Understanding and documenting their life cycle would support their conservation. What? These are two different species of giant witch moths that you didn't know about. Believe it or not, but there are many, many, many species of witch moths. Most people only know the white witch or the black witch, but there are literally dozens of large species. These are the species Cyclopus caicutiens and Latus marmorides. Yes, there are so many species, guys. This is a, a group of very big moth species that rarely gets attention. The angle is awkward, but these species have nice color patterns. If you are in Central or South America, it's easy to observe them by just putting out some rotting fruits. That's the end of my video, bye guys, I love you all. Thank you for everybody who donated. I use the money I make on Patreon to buy the fruit to make this video.